Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about Shin Megami Tensei Devil Downloader Liberation, or D2 for short. The latest mobile game that I am hopelessly and probably clinically addicted to. Since D2's international release date, I've been talking about this game almost non-stop. Heck, while I'm recording a video talking about the game, I am also playing the game. I like it a lot. But, I wanted to take some time away from playing the game to actually make a video about it, and give you guys a little bit of the knowledge I've acquired while playing it for probably 50 hours plus. So in this beginner's guide, we're going to be going over demon suggestions, how to get over certain roadblocks that you may encounter during your gameplay, and also how to avoid some of the newbie traps that you can encounter if you're not well advised. To ensure that anyone picking this game up for the first time can progress as smoothly as possible and get all those awesome five-star demons that they want. So with that being taken into consideration, let's begin. But before we begin, first and foremost, we have to understand how this game compares to other gacha games, such as Fire Emblem Heroes and Fate Grand Order. Games in this genre usually have a pretty bad reputation in the mobile games industry for nickel and diming players just so they have a very small chance to obtain and play as one of their favorite characters. And whether you believe this reputation given to the free-to-play model is justified or not, these types of games inherently do have this stigma attached to them, and sadly, Devil Downloader is no different. However, while summoning for rare units is a thing in Devil Downloader, before we go any further, I just want to stress this right now. This game is about as free to play as it gets, and isn't pay to win at all as of the current update. Unless you got Huang Di, then you're literally God, but you know, he's kind of rare, but... Outside of that, buying items from the shops does give you a slight edge, but not even remotely required. I should know, I spent a lot of gems on this game, and some free-to-play friends are still farther in the game than me, which sucks a lot, might I add, but we'll get into the eye that is a little bit later. Right now, let's assume you've cleared through Chapter 1. You understand how to play Devil Downloader to some extent and come across your first stage that you just simply can't beat. What do you do? Well. For starters, it's smart to level up. Once you clear a chapter, a leveling quest will be unlocked, which are way more efficient to grind on than the main story missions. So leveling up on these stages is highly recommended compared to others. So you leveled up a bit and you still can't win. What the heck? Well, it's perhaps time to obtain some new demons and add them to your party from the Church of False Gods. Now in this segment, we're gonna be talking about Ose. He's a fallen angel, Jaguar with a Speedo. Oh yeah, and two swords. He's also one of the best demons in the entire game currently. And no, I'm not joking. This this demon, which you can make almost at the very start of the game, can be better than almost anything and will carry you for the entire game if you know what you're doing. There is one caveat though. He has to be a teal os because once he awakens, he will get access to null physical. Now to do this as easy as possible, assuming you've not already fused away your teal satanta, which is a free unit when you start the game, fuse him with a clear oni. The colors are right next to the levels of the demon, by the way. To make a teal, Kaiwan, the starfish dude. Next, combine Kaiwan with a clear Arion Horod to make teal Ose. This demon, once awakened, has no weakness and null physical, along with a very high attack stat and access to charge, making him, well, pretty darn good. Now to awaken Ose, you need Ether, which can be farmed from the Strange Signal Demon Buster area under the map tab. After collecting enough ether from these missions, head on over to Pandemonium and awaken your Teal Os. Other amazing three-star demons I highly recommend are a Teal Fenhuang or Suzaku, but only if you can awaken it since it has a glaring weakness to physical damage, which every demon has by default. But once awakened, it will resist that damage, making it a pretty solid demon. After that, I recommend Teal Isis if you can fuse her. She's a pretty easy to make demon, gets access to Sama Recarm, which can revive your demons, and if you make her Teal, also has no weaknesses. And after that, a Teal Horus, who is a fantastic demon for PvE gameplay, has access to Dekunda, which removes debuffs, and is also a pretty solid healer. Now it's important to fuse these demons all with the teal archetype to ensure that they have their max effectiveness, but how do we do this? Well, if you need any assistance with fusing, check out the fusion calculator I've linked in the description. With this tool, you can find the easiest way to create the demons that you want without wasting too much magnetite, which is a very, very scarce resource. Now that we got these new demons though, it's time to level them up. But leveling even with the grinding stages takes a while, so let's speed it up with the demon Kanbari, who is absolutely hideous, might I add. But once you've unlocked the multi-fusion in the church, we can work on making two of these 
disgusting yet amazing demons. First up, we need to gather a few clear demons via demon negotiation, as multifusion only works with demons of a clear archetype. First up, we need to clear Chapter 1's leveling quest and recruit 5 slimes. After that, we're going to head to Chapter 2's leveling quest and get 2 Malcoms and 1 Preta. Then we're going to hit up Chapter 3's leveling quest for a Nekomata and a Sandman. Once you have all of these demons, the first one we're going to make is a Bicorn by fusing the Nekomata and a Slime. Fuse this Bicorn again with another Slime to make Inugami. After we're done with that, we're going to combine two Melcoms together with two Slimes to make two separate Kuruma Tengus. After that, we're going to make a Yomotsu Shikome by fusing Kuruma Tengu and a Preta. And lastly, fuse a Slime with a Sandman to make a Kappa Tengu. Lastly, combine all four of these demons to make Kanbari, whose passive skill is Luck, increasing EXP and Maka from all sources by 20%. And the best part is, you can fuse a second Kanbari and have this effect go to 40%. If you're on a stage that allows two Devil Downloaders, like the Grinding Stages or the Aura Gate. The ideal grinding setup as of this video is starting the stage with the main character, whose Demon Tamer skill increases EXP even further, and take demons you wish to level in your main party and the backup party to the Chapter 1 grinding stage on Hell difficulty. Bring a Teal Ops with you, and regardless of the level in which your party is, you can clear this stage since slimes can only use physical attacks, and an Awakened Teal Ops nullifies these attacks 100%. So simply turn on Auto Quest, let it run while you go do something else, and come back. Hey, all your demons are leveled up. But once you progress and make it to chapter 6, you might want to start using the level quest there, as you can recruit 2 star demons with relative ease, and these are incredibly helpful for evolving your demons and progressing further into Devil Downloader. The only downside is, the levels are a little bit tougher to auto, but with 2 parties of demons, I think you'll manage. But eventually, even the Mighty Oaks will reach his limit and become level capped. To remove this limitation, head on over to Pandemonium and get to work on promoting your demons. The most efficient way to do this is to max out the level 2 star demons that you've acquired from Demon Negotiation and max out their levels to 35. Then take two other low level 2 star demons with you and combine all three to evolve it into a 3 star demon. Do this enough times and you can make your Os, which was originally a 3 star demon, into a 4 star demon, which increases his level cap by 5 more levels. Lastly, let's talk about what not to do in Devil Downloader. And first and foremost, do not spend all your gems on summons. I did that and I really regret it. Instead, head to the shop and spend the free gems that the game gives you on the largest Magnetite packets you can afford. Magnetite allows you to fuse any demon that you want eventually, and as a rule of thumb, fusion is way smarter than hoping for that 0.05% drop, okay? Because with fusion, you are guaranteed to get the demon that you want eventually, excluding some of the gacha-only demons which can only be summoned that way. Also, don't waste your stamina potions in the early levels. As you level up, you will continue to gain more stamina, but once you start to reach level 30, your stamina gauge is going to be pretty darn big, so you're going to get a lot more mileage out of those potions when your player level is a lot higher. Also, don't forget, you have other characters to play as other than the main character. Megakin, for example, has passives that make demon negotiation a lot easier, and Rika is simply put a boss destroyer, allowing you to get more damage once you charge up your special attacks. You may not like the designs of all these characters, but I highly recommend you work on all their passives and at least put a little bit of time into each of them, because they can help you out in a lot of different situations. Whereas your main character kinda just helps you level up your demons a bit faster. And one last tip guys, as a rule of thumb, do not use any item you just have one of. For example, the Awakening Crystals are super rare, as are the Magatama items which increase transfer points. So make sure you save them or ask somebody on the subreddit if it's a good idea to invest in using the item on the demon you selected. Because these items will become much more scarce after the game's initial release. And with that, we're pretty much done here, guys. This concludes my beginner's guide to Devil Downloader. I want to give a special thanks to the DX2 subreddit linked in the description for compiling a lot of the demon recommendations and also just generally helping me out in understanding the game a little bit better so I can pass the information on to you guys. 
I do honestly enjoy this game a whole heck of a lot, but even as a hardcore Atlas fan, a lot of these mechanics simply just went way over my head, so I'm very thankful that the Japanese fans that enjoyed this game are able to pass some of the knowledge and the metagaming on to us international fans. But uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really like this game a lot and want to continue making more videos for this series. However, my gotcha luck is awful. So if you have any other suggestions for videos or want to see other gameplay mechanics covered in depth, let me know. I am really, really in love with this game. I'm still playing it while recording this. That's how addicted I am. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed and see you next time. Bye.